It's been more than 20 years since the turn of the century, which means 1. I'm very old now, and therefore 2. You kids need to get off my lawn! In terms of video games though, well... Well, actually, actually, it still makes me feel old. Did you know that since the turn of the century, we've been treated to no less than four generations of consoles? It's true. From the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, which launched in 2000, all the way through to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X slash Xbox Series S launches in 2020, we've seen some amazing progress. There've been fantastic follow-ups to long-standing franchises, brand new IPs, and more technological advances advances than you can shake a Wiimote at. But we've already celebrated all the good stuff, and I'm getting grouchy in my old age, so I think it's about time we took a look at the worst games of the century so far. Besides, if there's one thing we at Triple Jump are well versed in, it's the worst games ever. Well, worse than most, anyway. I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and these are the 10 worst video games of the century so far. Number 10. Umbrella Core When you've churned out as many games in the past 25 years as the good people down at Capcom, you're bound to drop a couple of clangers. Since 2000, the Japanese developer has released more than 25 Resident Evil titles alone, and though several of them are considered some of the best games of all time, just as many lie at the opposite end of the spectrum. We must give an honourable mention here to Resident Evil 6, which is considered to be by far the worst of the eight numbered titles, but sadly we couldn't give it a spot on this list, partly because it's not that bad, but mostly because Umbrella Core clearly took one look at everything Resident Evil 6 did wrong, loudly declared hold my beer, and then proceeded to poop right in everyone's shoes. Figuratively. Now don't get us wrong, there's nothing inherently bad about multiplayer shooters, but Umbrella Core felt very much like a generic FPS with nothing more than Resident Evil branding slapped all over it. Achieving an abysmal score of 38 on Metacritic, the game was lambasted for its technical flaws, unintimidating enemies, and overall lacklustre gameplay. It's certainly at the bottom end of the Resident Evil pile, and therefore its spot on this list is very much deserved. Number 9. Tomb Raider The Angel of Darkness now, I don't want to imply that there's any kind of correlation or causation between titles containing colons and being a bad game, but all I will say is you can expect to find the offending punctuation in 7 out of the 10 entries in this list. 8 if you include the implicit Resident Evil colon that ought to be in front of Umbrella Core, but officially isn't. We're watching you, colon. You stay away from us. The first few entries in the Tomb Raider franchise were incredibly good, praised for everything from their revolutionary graphics to your ability to lock your butler in the freezer. Sadly, the series' sixth instalment failed to live up to its predecessors, although its story was looked upon semi-favourably and it sold incredibly well, at least before word got out. However, the game's numerous control, graphical and technical problems were more than enough to brand it as not only the worst Tomb Raider entry ever, but one of the worst games of all time. There's a common theme here already. The Angel of Darkness was received so badly, in fact, that it caused the next two games in its planned trilogy to be scrapped entirely, which, let's face it, was probably for the best. Now, if you could excuse me for just one moment, I need to go and get Winston out of the walk-in. My morning coffee's not gonna make itself, is it? Number 8. The Simpsons Wrestling Usually, when you put two good things together, you end up with something that's at least equal to the sum of its parts. A good example, burgers are great. Cheese are also great. Put them together, and you've got yourself a tasty treat, my friend. The same should apply, then, to The Simpsons Wrestling. We like The Simpsons, and Adam says we're contractually obliged to enjoy wrestling, so this 2001 title really should have been a slam dunk, which I think is a wrestling term but I'm too afraid to ask Adam. It doesn't take Professor Frink, however, to deduce that its inclusion on this list means The Simpsons Wrestling is a less than satisfactory game. Despite having all the ingredients for what could have been a fun, if forgettable, fighter, the title has been relegated to the proverbial trash can of gaming history, with critics and players alike panning it for its poor gameplay mechanics, lack of new ideas, and just for being an overall waste of a license. 
sense, really. There is a small amount of fun to be had in pitting characters against each other if, and only if, you're a die-hard Simpsons fan, and the voice acting is okay, which is about the closest thing to a compliment I can come up with. You're welcome, Simpsons Wrestling. Number 7. Bomberman Act Zero we have all, at some point, gone through something of an image crisis and made attempts to update our look, be it with a drastic new haircut, a new wardrobe full of clothes, or that ridiculous fez that Ben keeps wearing around the office. Will, will you please take that off? You, you look like an idiot! Clearly whoever furnished Ben with his preposterous headwear was also responsible for Bomberman's unwelcome makeover in 2006's Act Zero. Now don't get me wrong, I love a bit of grit in my gaming sandpit. But just as I wouldn't go into Outlast expecting a falling block puzzler, I don't play a Bomberman game to look at shades of grey and feel sad about the world. Playing as some bomber men, players are tasked with fighting their way to the surface of the Earth in order to escape the planet, which sounds like a decent enough idea on paper. But in practice, it was very poorly executed. In addition to the character's ugly new look, players reprimanded Act Zero for its stupidly long loading times, repetitive gameplay, and general all-round shoddiness, achieving a dismal average on Metacritic of 34. If you're thinking of making a first-time foray into the world of Bomberman, the little cartoon hero has appeared in over 70 titles to date, so we would suggest that you pick up literally anything that isn't this. Number 6. Sonic Boom – Rise of Lyric I don't think it's unfair to say that when a developer refuses to offer advanced copies of a game to reviewers, a whole bunch of alarm bells start ringing. It doesn't make you look cool and mysterious, it makes us think that you're trying to sell as many copies as you can before the public realises your game is a pile of tosh. Such was the case with Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, which was only made available to critics on release day, presumably in the hopes that Sega could claw back a few quid before anyone realised that the reviews would be composed exclusively of four-letter words. Achieving a thoroughly embarrassing score of just 32% on Metacritic, the game was slated by fans and reviewers alike for, above anything else, being boring, which is indeed one of the worst crimes a game can commit. Tedious level designs, dreary puzzles, and an uninspired combat system all contributed to Sonic Boom's poor reception. And whilst its buggy state at launch was also a serious problem, it's not as though the game would be much better if it were glitch free. Still, it was only released on the Wii U, so at least we can sleep at night safe in the knowledge that very few people could subject themselves to it. Number 5. Aliens Colonial Marines this game has a colon in the title, and the word colon hidden in its name, so you know it's going to be bad. The problem with adapting any form of media into another, especially when the original is held in high esteem, is the comparisons will always be drawn. You need only look at the parade of terrible movie adaptations of video games that we've all been subjected to over the years. Sadly, looking at it from the other angle, one game that will always stand firmly in the shadow of its big screen counterpart is a Aliens Colonial Marines. Based on James Cameron's 1986 sci-fi action romp Aliens, Colonial Marines set out to capture the essence and exhilaration of its source material, and failed at basically every turn. The game invokes none of the fun, suspense, or atmosphere of the film, and its glitchy AI makes the aliens themselves seem less like threats and more like strangers hurrying away to catch a bus. Luckily, just over one year later, Alien Isolation came along to prove that a good game based on the film franchise is more than achievable. Now go and sit in the corner and think about what you've done, Colonial Marines, if you can nav mesh your way over there. Probably not. Number 4. WWE 2K20 Speaking of shoddy, buggy messes of games, number 4 is WWE 2K20. Number 3, Warcraft 3 Reforged. Oh, hang on. Email from Adam. Uh, apparently it's also in my contract to actually talk about 2K20 in this video. 
Okay, here goes. Released in October 2019, WWE 2K20 was the 21st entry into the video game branch of the WWE or WWF franchise. It was also, incidentally, a complete sham. You've no doubt seen the countless compilation videos of the numerous glitches and bugs that plagued 2K20 at launch. And although it's funny to laugh as Barbara gets herself tangled in the ropes, do try to remember this is not a victimless crime. A lot of poor sods actually paid good money for this steaming pile of ploppers. If you can look past all of that, however, well, WWE 2K20 still isn't very good. And although critics did have some nice-ish things to say about the character creation suite, that really was where the compliments ended, with players maligning everything from the graphics to the new control system. Still, at least the franchise has gotten back on track with the release of 2020's WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Oh, hang on, no, it says here that Battlegrounds was a completely forgettable wrestling game and the WWE series has hit rock bottom. It also said to read that last sentence like it's a wrestling joke, but I don't get it. Number three, Warcraft 3 Reforged. We can only assume that Warcraft 3 Reforged looked back on the Diablo Immortal incident of BlizzCon 2018 and thought, hmm, I wonder if we can recreate those feelings of disappointment in video game form. The original 2002 title, Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos, received universal acclaim from both critics and players, sitting at a very respectable 92 on Metacritic. On the other hand, whilst earning a middle-of-the-road score of 59 from the pro reviewers, Re Forged has garnered a score of only 0.6 out of 10 from players. And no, that's not a typo, it doesn't even reach the dizzying heights of 10% according to quote unquote fans. Among the complaints were missing features that had been promised by Blizzard, a plethora of technical issues, and graphics that were worse than the original, allegedly. To add insult to injury, because Reforged shares Reign of Chaos's client, players of the latter were forced to update the game to a newer version, imposing many of the unwelcome changes onto the original. The situation got so dire that the developer began offering refunds to anyone who'd been disappointed by the title, and at the time of recording, players are still split on whether or not the game is worth bothering with at all. I'm kidding, of course, the answer is no. Number 2. Alone in the Dark Illumination Let's take a moment to analyse the title of this one, shall we? If you were alone in, let's say, the dark, that would be quite scary. If you were to then switch on a light, illuminating your surroundings, you've probably eliminated at least 70% of your anxiety. Under normal circumstances, that would be great, but when it comes to survival horror, well, do you see the problem, Alone in the Dark Illumination? Although the Alone in the Dark franchise has never quite managed to repeat the critical success of the 1992 original, the first four sequels were at least adequate survival horror titles. Scraping an utterly dismal score of 19 on Metacritic, though, neither critics nor players had a single good thing to say about Alone in the Dark Illumination, with one reviewer even going as far as to claim that Uwe Boll's tragic movie adaptation of the franchise franchise was better. Do, do you know how rubbish you have to be if you're worse than something Uwe Boll made? The idea of enemies that are only vulnerable in the light is not a terrible one, but once again, we're lumbered with a game that's all talk and no trousers. Aside from the horribly unbalanced gameplay that doesn't bother adjusting the difficulty depending on the number of players, with the single player experience being brutally hard as a result, the main complaint is the game just feels unfinished and it has more bugs than afternoon tea with Timon and Pumba. That's a Lion King reference. I hope you enjoyed it. And number one, Ride to Hell Retribution. There aren't many games that leave me lost for words, but I'm genuinely struggling for where to start with a game that received one reviewer's Lifetime Achievement Award for Total Abhorrence. Considered one of the worst games ever made, up there with the likes of E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Superman 64, Ride to Hell Retribution does absolutely nothing right. It was originally slated to be a Grand Theft Auto style game set in the 1960s, which sounds great. So of course, Ride to Hell Retribution 
didn't do that. The title was universally panned for absolutely everything, including its generally broken gameplay, poor writing, worse voice acting, its terrible attitude towards women, and those awkward adult scenes in which you do the nasty fully clothed. We've been able to find at least something nice to say about most of the games on this list, but there really is no compliment we can pay to this utter skid mark of a game. So, without further ado, I'm pleased to award Ride to Hell Retribution the Triple Jump and Stoke-on-Trent Award for Apocalyptic Failure, and proudly crown it the worst game of the century so far. It's going to take some beating, though we can't recommend that anyone try. Please, no more of this.